Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first ever Prusa Live. Uh, we're happy to have you all with us. And today I am joined by the man who brings us all together, Joseph Prusa, uh, Nicholas Zusa, the man who's normally behind the camera, but today he's in front of it, and our special guest, Martin Preshek. Uh, so let's kick things off. And I've got to warn you guys, this is our first time, so things might be a little rough. But we're going to keep on doing this, and hopefully things will get better. So keep staying stay tuned week after week. Uh, so we're going to get started first today with talking about our Prusa Printers Picks of the Weeks. Uh, so, uh, Nicholas, what, what is your, your pick this week of something awesome off of Prusa Printers? So I wear contact lenses, and sometimes you, you know, sort of uh, forget about that you were wearing contacts and a speckle of dust or something goes into your eye. So it's always nice to have backup or uh, pair of lenses with me. So I have this print in place box for lenses. It's printed like this. So it's from PETG, so it's pretty flexible. Uh, there's a color change that makes the nice lettering for left and right uh, eye. And yeah, this hinge is awesome. And it has like a super satisfying when I like ah, click, it's awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice snap. Yeah, so PETG, Prusa Orange, and Jet Black. And I need to give a shout out to the uh, designer, which is Yuko. Uh, the file is available on Prusa printers. So if you wear contact lenses, I can really greatly suggest this. Yeah, I love the mechanical snap on that, and print places are always great. You know, being able to just open up your your file, toss it on your printer, and get a functional object that you don't have to do a lot of assembly or add extra nuts and bolts is just really the dream on three D printing. So it's it's really oh. great. Oh yeah, and the best part is that usually it, it has a living hinge, and this one is designed in a way that it can actually be printed in PETG and it doesn't break. So I I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really great. Uh, Joe, what did you bring for us this week? So uh, this is uh, a back clip. Uh, I'm not sure how well it will be seen. It might seem simple, but I admire how over-engineered it is. You can find it on Prusa printers. It is part of our latest uh, you know, latest uh, design challenge. And Nicholas will play a video. But I mean, when this thing bites, it just stays. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> now it, it, it just stays. It, it, it is locked in place and it can grab really tight. So, Mikolas, do you have the video? Yeah. Because I think that that is as good as the design itself. It's pre pretty <laughs> funny. So, we should be seeing it. Yeah. Oh, I hope it won't be too loud. Oh, I, 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 I like this kind of problem solving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's really uh, great. I love how this community can take something as simple as a chip clip, a bag clip, and like just blow it way out to extremes and just make something so yeah. awesome like that. But I mean, I mean, what is important about this that you can take this uh, design, the, the, the latching one uh, or the latching idea, and you can use it in your know, other designs. So I mean, even though on the first side it might seem pretty simple, 
but I think it is a nice, uh, I, I, how to say it, to, to play with something simple and you can get it so advanced and then you can reuse the, the findings you find, found out in, in other designs. He, oh yeah, I can see the cam on that being used in all kinds of things, you know, to like, you know, grip onto a, a railing to like mount a, a phone mount or, you know, something like that. Like I, I see lots of potential there. Andre, the designer, even uploaded uh, a smaller uh, version. He scaled it down to 50%, where it's clearly uh, way more likely that the uh, hinge will fuse, it, fuse together. But it it's printable, and, you know, at the scale, it's really impressive. That's, that's really great. All right, so it's funny because I normally tout uh, super functional prints and things like that, but uh, you guys both brought brought functional prints and I for once uh, brought something that was just kind of cute and fun and silly. Uh, I popped on Prusa printers and saw the the Prusa print deathmate <laughs> uh, from Neo 3D print. Uh, and I just thought it was adorable and had to go up on oh, my, yeah. my shelf of prints. Oh um, yeah, oh it, yeah. It's a I, bunch I, of different I, parts, but everything fits together super well. Um, and you know, it was a, a fairly easy print. There's a couple parts that need some some color changes as you go, um, but otherwise, yeah. you know, I, I basically printed most of the parts overnight. Um, I mean, I mean, I like this design from so many from so, so many points of view. It, it is. Uh, I'm actually thinking about contacting uh, contacting this designer to include it as a, as a test print because you, there are, there's just so many great things. You can you can learn the basic techniques, like the color change you set, and it's fun and, you know, it works. Yeah, it's, it's great. And, you know, I think it's uh, so fitting again to our community because of the, the whimsy that's involved in it, but, you know, still embracing, uh, embracing the printers. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really great. Uh, so, uh, moving on to our next, we have our special guest with us, uh, Martin Preshek from uh, uh, Prusa Polymers, and he's going to come and talk to us because last week we released a brand new polymer, a brand new plastic. Um, previously, we had ASA, PLA, uh, and PET-G. Now, we have PC Blend, and Martin is coming in to uh, tell us all about PC Blend how it works and why you might want to print with it. Martin, thanks for joining us. Hi, Martin. Hi, guys. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we can absolutely. hear you well. That's so cool. uh, I was just explaining to our listeners that last week we, we released PC Blend. Uh, do you want to yeah. tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, definitely. Like it's, as you said, our newest material. And after we already used the basic materials as uh, PLA, uh, PTG and uh, SAA, we wanted to release something more interesting, some engineer material. And yeah, after some discussion, we decided to go to PC Blend. Yeah, you can see them on screen. Because like we wanted something very strong and durable and also with uh, a high temperature resistance. And, but also it has to be printable on our open without enclosure MK3, uh, MK3. So we started to develop our PC blend and after about a year of work, we, yeah, we did it and we released it. Nice. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I mean, I'm, the, the guys did an incredible job with it. Basically, uh, uh, one of our lines is compounding line and Martin is in charge of that, and that that makes it possible to actually make things like that. So, and it takes a long time, as Martin said, uh, it took a year. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, obviously we call it PC blend and not just polycarbonate. Um, do you want to explain a little bit of, of you know, what what's the, the blend is for and why it's not just a, a pure polycarbonate, why you, you added these, these extra, as I like to call it, herbs and spices for the secret blend? Yeah, the problem with the uh, pure PC is that uh, it's not really, you are not really able to print it on our printer. So uh, you have like two choices. You can add some um, uh, yeah, additives or you can just uh, mix it together with, with other materials and then you are able to, to print, print it uh, on our printer because it's 
Um, yeah. Uh, right. So, so normal polycarbonate has a lot of cooling issues where where it will yeah. shrink, causing cooling more, issue and causing more pain and curling. Yeah. Yeah, and the the PC blend has additives in there to to make sure that the prints stay nice and flat and and you know yeah. uh, and stick the, to your bed yeah. and such. Yeah, I put yeah. the uh, prints like you can see on on the screen or like these. And for example, this part of what, what you can see, uh, this is uh, part of our uh, component line. It's a, I would say it's clutch. And during the process of developing, uh, we had issue on the component link line and this part breaks and we have to yeah, fix it. And But the new part would be av available in like 14 or three weeks, 14 days or three weeks. So we decided to just uh, draw it and print it and it worked really, really well. This is actually, uh, is it, it's transferring the, the whole torque of the compounding line, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's that's pretty. Oh yeah, I I I, I, I love how how close it is to to what we do with three D printers because our printers print three D printers all the time, mm -hmm. but actually actually this is a, a whole different meta level because uh, the the material actually help to finish developing itself because without it we wouldn't be able to use the line for two weeks. Yeah. And, <laughs> and basically, the part could stand the whole torque of the of the whole thing easily. Yeah, this this is really great. And I think it's gonna bring a lot to the, the possibility of what our, our users are going to be able to print with or print out. Uh, because, you know, it really is a true engineering grade plastic um, that will, you know, really, as we're showing in this example, really live up to real world usages, um, which is something I think a lot of people like. Yeah, Nicholas, you even yeah. have, a, have a part that you're already using. Yeah. So. I was uh, lucky to have the Prusham and PC blend a little bit earlier before it was released, as we were testing it internally. And my thing doesn't have this filter thingy, so you know that's kind of really not ideal. But uh, I was worried that if I printed from PLA, uh, PEGI, maybe even ASA, that's on the edge, that the part will warp and deform very quickly if I pour boiling hot water, for example, when you know uh, boiling pasta or whatever. So I printed it from polycarbonate, and yeah, this sh this part should have no problems uh, surviving that. Yeah. And it's That's actually good. super challenging print because uh, the first layer there's these tiny gap fills all over the place, so it's just depositing a tiny amount of filament and then retracting and moving, and it's doing it all over the place. And yeah, printed fine. Yeah. I think we can. Uh, speaking about this, move on to uh, some important uh, things about printing polycarbonate, which might be the, the glue stick, if we want to talk about that. Yeah. Actually, we, we add the glue stick uh, to each uh, spool. And the reason is that um, actually you are able to print it without any glue, but it's safer to use it. And uh, you don't, if you want, don't want to damage your, your sheet, it's better to use it um, before printing. Yeah. Uh, and so. we're we're talking about the heat tolerance and being able to use that as a as a dish strainer. But uh, from my understanding, if you want some greater heat tolerance, you can you can anneal uh, polycarbonate, uh, correct, and and get some some uh, a few more degrees out of it, right? Yeah, like uh, normally it can uh, temperature resistance is about one hundred thirteen degrees, but after annealing, you can have even like thirty degrees more, so you can have about one hundred forty degrees. Uh, temperature descent, which is outstanding, I would say. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. really great. Yeah, oh, yeah. The, the the thing is that uh, not not only that we have the compounding line in house, but we also have a fully equipped testing lab, which I don't think is a, a pretty standard lab uh, or pretty standard thing with with uh, filament uh, filament manufacturers, and we can test all these things in house quickly. Yeah. And, we have to. Uh, yes. I mean, it is it is uh, exceptionally wonderful that we can, uh, when when we are testing new polymers, we can do a couple batches a day. I mean, from uh, from unpacking the uh, from unpacking the uh, resin bag into like the final test print, like a couple of goes a day. That is incredible. So I'm I'm really happy that we we got into the filament manufacturing and we did it the proper way. We have a question mm -hmm. from the chat actually. 
Uh, it's from PC Practical Printing. And uh, the question is, can we expect to see the PC blend uh, making its way into the farm uh, for the parts for Prusa? Yeah, actually, we have already tested one part. This is punch out from AK3. And normally we are using uh, SAA because of uh, like uh, there's a high temperature around this part, but it's also possible to print it from uh, the, our program carbonate. So we are now just now discussing if uh, we're gonna switch or not, and we will see. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's, so, that's really, Mikolas, really nice. how, how how can you even follow the chat? Because I mean, <laughs> yeah. I have it I have it open here, and it, it is just bonkers. It's pretty uh, crazy. I have uh, helpers here that feed me the questions, <laughs> but I'm I'm I looking mean, at it. I mean, who 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 would expect that our first try of uh, I mean, darker chatting with with ourselves uh, will have so many followers? How, how many viewers that is do we have? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. It's uh, 1,400 viewers right now. Yeah. Hi, yeah. hi everyone. Thanks for watching. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. This. Thank you, everyone. Well, this is, this is really great. We did not expect the, this kind of turnout for the very first go. Uh, so yeah, this this really shows how how great this community is, and we we really really appreciate you all turning out for this. Uh, so yeah. yeah. I mean, I I think now it's an appropriate time that. Uh, to say why we are doing this, because uh, basically all uh, all the shows for this year are canceled, and we promise that we will keep in touch with everyone. So this is uh, one of the ways we are trying to do that, and we were like, okay, if this uh, if this has some uh, if someone will actually watch it, which <clears throat> uh, was <laughs> actually proven just <laughs> just a few moments ago that we will try to do it regularly. We don't know yet if we will do it every week or every two weeks, but I think every two weeks is a uh, pretty good, pretty good uh, uh, tempo. And we plan to uh, bring more people from in uh, or from uh, from the Prusa research. Uh, we what we have on mine is Wojciech, who is the developer of the slicer, which has some great things coming up. Or, or David, which is the main developer of the of the firmwares, and I mean, these are just two guys, but we have loads and loads of people. Uh, just today, I asked uh, how many, uh, how big is our team, and it is 520 people, because we are still hiring now to keep everything manufactured in time and being shipped swiftly. So. I think I think this is a great start of something uh, which which will stay with us for quite some time. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I, I want to mention too that one of the things that we're looking at is is not just talking about you know what's going on with our team, but also some of the great users that are out there that are are using our printers and making amazing things. So uh, you never know who's going to show up on the the stream week to week. So make sure to you know keep tuning in every week. Um, but. We're not done yet. So uh, first, I would like to thank thank Martin for coming on and, and joining us. Uh, but I think we're going to move on and and talk about some of the other things going on with the company with with Joe now. So uh, yeah, thanks, Martin. Hey, thanks, Martin. Bye. 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 All right. So uh, Joe, we've had uh, we've had a bunch of things going on. You know, obviously everything that's been going on with PPE with COVID, and you know we've been been so busy with the the face shields and testing on on sterilization, and you know all of these different things. But you know we haven't stopped there. Uh, we've oh, yeah. released uh, groups um, so that people could help organize themselves around. Uh, printing PPE and local, uh, you know, communities of, of Prusa users who who want to interact with each other. Um, but just recently, we also released uh, pr print on demand. Uh, so why don't you tell everyone a little bit about print on demand so that we can we can get everyone caught up? Because I think I think we kind of slid this one under the radar a little bit, and it's something I think oh, a yeah. lot of users might be excited about. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So uh, uh, Mikolas will be maybe trying to show you something. I'm streaming from iPad, so uh, it, it is pretty hard for for me. You should but see. But on the that. Prusa, yeah, yeah, yeah. We see beautiful on J now. <laughs> but but print on demand was uh, was uh, basically uh, on the Prusa printer since the beginning. You could always like check it 
that it is available, but uh, the, the functionality is planned for a long, long time. But we, I mean, obviously we, uh, based on the feedback, we have uh, things which have more priority, but this is getting more priority uh, right now because uh, just it makes sense for us now to try to uh, pair people who want to have something printed and our wonderful users who have the printers. And this can give everyone just an easy way to, to connect. What we did in the recent update is that, uh, that you can request the print uh, basically without having an account. But it, there's still a lot of work. So, I mean, don't uh don't don't think that it is uh like the final stage uh, we we always uh, we always uh improve and work on the on the projects and on the features uh with, with the users but th this was updated recently and we are now thinking about uh about making it more available uh, especially in the in the more uh uh well in the situations in the countries which are not that well supplied because i don't know if you know but on say uh one of the three process told me today that uh today uh, there was 106,000 new covid 19 cases which is actually the biggest number since uh this horrible thing started so we are definitely not out of the out of the bad situation. So we are still trying to find a ways how to how to help out. And especially in the in the poorer regions, uh, this might be very helpful. And yeah, and oh, and when we are talking about the PPE, uh, I'm not sure if uh, if Nicholas is still on the stream. I am. But here. yeah, but as I said, uh, as I always said, we like to do our homework properly. So I can show you, this is, this is a sneak peek of the new version, but uh, why I'm showing this to you, we just got the RC3 uh, independently certified. So that is very nice. I'm very proud of it because the, the original design basically passed the uh, certification without too much hassle. It just takes time, even, even though it took us uh, a little bit over a month and it might seem pretty slow, uh, during the normal situation, it takes like four months to certify something. So it is still great. But when we were, uh, when we were working on it and actually, uh, actually thinking about what we could do better, uh, in the process, we designed this, which is, which is the next version, which will be coming out shortly. Uh, we are not, we don't know yet about the name, but uh, we tried to testify it, uh, sorry, uh, certify it uh, in the same process. And this one actually passed the highest uh, certification for the, for the face shield. So it is an achievement for a 3D printed design to, to, be, <laughs> to be this high, high class because the cheapest shield with the certification we found here in Czech was 75 bucks. So I think, I think uh, we as a maker community we can do great things pretty fast and I will be interested to see what the, what the standard players in the medical equipment uh, will, will say about this or what they think about it actually. Yeah, this, this is really great. And, you know, combining these, these shields with print on demand, you know, really makes an easy way for, uh, for those who need the, the, uh, this PPE or, you know, other items uh, to be able to connect with people who have printers that might actually be able to make it for them as well. And, you know, there's a lot of people at home right now who are, you know, potentially out of work and looking for some kind of way to, you know, help supplement some of that income with the printer that they have sitting on the shelf. So, you know, being able to, to get connected with people who, who need things, you know, could be a, a really, really great resource. So, yeah, I think, oh, I think yeah. the timing oh, yeah. is perfect. We and uh, I, uh, I, I forgot one thing. We are actually, as, as we finish the certification, we are now uh, writing an article about how it goes and, you know, to help people uh, go through this process swiftly and try trying to help out. Because uh, in, in some countries, I mean, pe people don't like the fact that uh, people help each other because, you know, the kind of companies can make 
money out of it. So, uh, so we want to help uh, the the people who are now helping to uh, to get the certification done because then uh, then nobody can say anything. We got a lot of questions about why we aren't inje injection molding these, and we are we are actually doing both. Yeah, and right now I have the yeah you probably too have the in injection molded one, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it took uh, us. We have. Yeah. We, we have certified both the 3D printed version and the injection molded version. And yeah, I, I, I think it might be first uh, the, the first of 3D printed part. But we did a lot of first. I mean, when we when we took the time to uh, to uh, test the disinfection methods for desktop FDM printed parts, which everyone everyone thought was impossible. And well, it turned out it is possible. So we have, I mean, if you if you look at it from the broader uh, broader view, uh, the the disinfection methods for the three D printed parts are thing which are going to help three D printing for a long time because you know everybody just assumed that it is uh, it is just too hard to clean the parts because of the of the crevices between the layers, and during the normal uh, during the normal times probably none of the labs would uh, would talk to us or it, it would be too expensive to test. But uh, it, I mean, the, the times were so nice that uh, every door was open and you could get basically anything done. And we, we tested we tested the disinfection methods with the uh, with the live COVID, which I think is incredible in just first few weeks of the pandemic. So yeah, that is that is to me one of the things that came across as as really being you know crucial and special about some of the the research that was done was you know we weren't just testing to see if we could disinfect parts from you know just general viruses or things like that, but the fact that you worked with testing teams to be able to actually test on on live COVID um, to know that it would disinfect against this specific uh, disease, this specific virus. Uh, that you know is threatening the world population right now. Uh, I, I just really think, really was was a perfect move. And everyone was so nice. Uh, they shared all the info, so we could you know share it forward with everyone. There weren't any you know you know we did this for you. There's like license or you can share it. It's our property. The the research that we did and it, it was for sure a lot of effort. And they were right. just like here, there you go. Please get it to everyone. Tell everyone what we found. This is safe. This is not yeah. safe. Everyone was just so great about this. Yeah, I mean, I've, yeah. I've always said that this culture of sharing is one of the most important parts of, of 3D printing. And it's one of the, the things that made me so excited about coming on board with working on, on Prusa printers also um, was, you know, continuing this idea of sharing back and giving back to the community because, it, you know, there are other digital fabrication platforms there are other tools uh, out there, but they don't have the community that 3D printing has. And I, oh, I yeah. personally strongly believe that that is because of this culture of, of giving back and sharing information that has always been at the core of, of the RepRap movement. And, uh, you know, thanks to Adrian and all of that team and, you know, has continued on with all the work that, that Joe has done through the years and, you know, so many others. And, it just it really brings us to a whole nother level and you know it was great to see it in this time too where you know it, obviously there's a lot of companies out there taking the the, oh, yeah. the pandemic as a chance to make a buck but we still have the yeah. community coalescing together to freely share yeah. knowledge and and you know work with each other but i mean i mean it is it, it is really funny uh I'm not funny more more of uh, interesting thing because I thought that we would be doing the shields for like two weeks and then the traditional manufacturing methods will take, take over. But I mean, to this day, we are still having people asking us for shields and we are still manufacturing them and we will do so as long as it, uh, as it is needed. And most likely when uh, Czechia is fine, we will, uh, as everything is running pretty smoothly, we will start. Uh, making them and, and ship them out over the world where it, where it is needed. But st I mean, still the, the traditional suppliers didn't take over the, the burden we, uh, we, the, the, we as a community have. And there, there's one 
very important thing about 3D printing it, that it is super decentralized and uh, super local. Because, I mean, if you have one giant factory in the middle of the state, you can make millions, but the distribu distribution of it is, uh, is the bus, bus go because you cannot get it into every tiny city. Uh, but guess what? I mean, every, every city on this planet has a 3D printer there. So uh, there, there were actually, there were actually uh, three villages in Czech which uh, were completely locked down. You couldn't go there. But there was a guy who had a 3D printer and he was printing face shields because you, you can always use like a big PET bottle uh, as the part of the shield. And I mean, even the army was dropping supplies there from the, from the helicopter. Okay. Yeah, that's incredible. Uh, someone's asking in the chat if someone in the company is in the risk group uh, or I think we have so far zero cases, right? We are um, in house. Yeah, we, we didn't have any cases, but the the the, the Czechia was very nice in the in the early restrictions. So we didn't have many, but we, we will see. I mean, there's a thing which is called uh, prevention paradox. If you do if you do very good prevention, it uh, makes people think that why should we do do why, why we should keep doing these things uh, because there are no cases. So we will see in, in the second wave. But we actually published on Friday some of our uh, some of our measures we have uh, in, in Trusa Research, and definitely I suggest suggest to you to to read it and pass it to your HR manager to share with friends. Uh, we are a manufacturing company, so our measures might be might be a little different. But I mean, I, I would say it, it is a showcase for uh, thinking out of the box. I mean, like definitely you should check the uh, the HR door window we made. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, uh, I mean, just get into that mood, and yeah, we we need to uh, be safe for a long time. I think I can. Pick one question for them all. I'm just gonna label it by chat, and it's Excel and Mark Four. It's I think it's gonna keep <laughs> going in the chat until we address it somehow. So Joe, oh, yeah. wanna tell us something about Excel or Mark Four or both? Yeah. Yeah, it is crazy. So uh, I mean, uh, the Excel. Uh, the the thing now uh, is that we cannot get the product into into uh, production because of the shipping. We were pretty lucky, and well, we were lucky and also pretty much prepared. We didn't have to stop uh, shipping and manufacturing for even a single day, but that is because we before the Chinese New Year we had a stock of three months worth of parts. And we we basically had a buffer even even when uh, even when uh, the the Chinese pr production companies were uh, struggling to get back uh, back on track. But now, uh, thanks to this, we we can work. But still, to this day, uh, if we are ordering something, even the express shipping, uh, way, which used to take two days, now takes two weeks or more. So it is basically impossible to get something from the design stage into the production stage because it takes multiple goals of the verifying production runs before we can actually start uh, shipping it. So it is possible for us to manufacture products we have uh, in production because we have all these things behind us. But I mean, at, th at this stage, it would just take years to get, uh, get the Excel into production. So. So it is a uh, little bit delayed. I have no idea for how long. Because I don't think it makes sense to make like date premises now. But let's hope that the situation will get better in next few months. Because uh, I mean, I don't know if you are familiar with the with the shipping, but not everything goes on the cargo planes. Basically, a lot of cargo goes uh, on the passenger planes. There are things which uh, th there's a thing which is called airtainer, 
and they fill up the the cargo space of the of the planes and that is why uh, the the shipping is so in, so so small and i don't think that the that the uh passenger flights will return very shortly and there's not a simple way to make more cargo planes and most of these are actually actually used by the uh, countries getting PPA supplies so so we are actually uh, we are actually we are actually uh, uh, using the time to add more features to the Excel so I mean the weight the weight sucks but actually it will it will bring some more features Yeah, I mean, that that is a, a really great point is we're not just sitting on our hands right now, you know, more features yeah. and, and, you know, more robustness is coming to the Excel as the development team, you know, is really yeah. taking this time to, to work on it. So, you know, while while everyone's going to have to wait a little bit longer, which, you know, none of us are going to say yeah. we aren't disappointed. I mean, all of us were excited about this. Um, yeah. It does mean in the end. You're just going to get a better product, which you know I, I think we'll all appreciate. You know, after all, yeah. So. And I mean, uh, the, there's not much plan for Mark IV yet, but we are counting on the fact that the the technologies we develop for the for the XL will pretty pretty quickly trickle down to to Mark III successor. But I mean, as I said, we we have no idea where when the when the XL will be out if we are lucky by the end of the year but i mean i don't think it's a good idea to promise any dates in in these in these times because basically nobody no nobody can predict anything yeah it you know it's it's hard right now but you know it's just the the fact I mean, of the world that you know there's a lot I mean, of things I, that are held up and a lot I, of things need, that are I, I need to i need to look at the chat because if people are trying to kill me now or not. Yeah. But, <laughs> so no, far, but, it seems fine, but you just yeah. said that uh, the one year thing. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I mean, the, the end of the year is six months away. But I, I mean, I just think it's better to to be a real than than to promise what we cannot achieve. Right. But I mean, we will keep you updated. Maybe, maybe in the next stream, everything will go back to normal and we can give you a date, but not right now. <laughs> so are we moving to the next topic or are we taking one more question? Uh, let's take another question. Okay, I have a one that I really like. It's by Zomi5RE and it's uh, is there some cool stuff coming to Prusa Slicer? And hell yeah, is some cool stuff coming to Prusa Slicer. Oh my that's god. Actually, that's actually a perfect segue into, uh, well, so actually, yes, yeah, sorry. I got confused. Yes, we'll, we'll cover this. We and have then we'll cool stuff other... in multiple places. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god, there's so much going on in the Prusa Slicer. And I mean, I, I even saw some, some guys start Started to compile the compile the master from the GitHub. Yeah, before we even make an alpha. The... Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... Tom, Tom Filament Frenzy was pinging out to everybody asking uh, how to compile software because he couldn't uh, he couldn't take the time to to wait until we actually <laughs> release because that man oh, is yeah. is just crazy oh, yeah. uh, and we love but, him. But yeah, but uh, but the slicer is now actually pretty easy to compile. Uh, well, one of the first things when we took over uh, for the slicer was to get everything into C++ and get get the build system going. So now, now a lot more people can join in. But uh, I mean, are, are we going to spoil the fun for for guys? Because I think I think we we would love to invite Wojtek for one of the next streams to talk about some of the features. And I mean. Let's not spoil the surprises. Maybe you can maybe you can find uh, Tom's Twitter and and see one of the features, but there's yeah way let's, more. Let's just tease it a little bit. We, yeah, there is work being done on. I mean, I mean, make, make, Nicholas, you cannot help yourself. I cannot right. help. Okay, and, one, and I know, one, and I know Tom one is thing, in the chat. And I know Tom is in the chat. So if everyone Nicholas, wants to beg Nicholas, Tom just, for just the things that he's thing, excited about. One thing only. Just one thing. 
Okay, I have two, <laughs> two things that I really love about the new version. But one uh, thing... I, okay. I'm gonna pick... <laughs> there's something being done to supports. That's it. Okay. I'm not gonna say anything more. You are such a tease. <laughs> Well, uh, I think as soon as the devs uh, will be ready to share something, uh, make sure you follow our Twitter. We always share uh, as soon as an alpha is ready. So, yeah, you will be able to play with it as soon as we have something uh, stable in our hands. But, yeah, let's not put any more pressure on Prusa Slicer devs. They are <laughs> making really awesome work. So you have a lot to look oh, yeah. forward to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Kudos to the team. I mean, yeah. it took some time after after we forked it to to get everyone up to the speed and to to uh, modernize the code base a little bit. But now it's just new rocking features ever ever released. But I think uh, I, I think we have also uh, in the two days plan the three nine zero firmware, right? Yes. Or or did or did I skip something? No, that's the that's the last big topic I think. Uh, All right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we kind of talked about the Prusa Excel having more time to kind of get out there and and get a little bit better as as time goes on. And we've talked about, you know, the the you know future of Prusa Slicer a little bit. But, you know, this is one of the things about, uh, in my opinion, and one of the things I really appreciated in, in kind of my journalism days about this company that that really set this company apart is how much we really continue developing our machines and and making them better over time um you know we don't just release something and that's it like the the, the mean, machines are constantly getting better and we just dumped a huge huge new firmware oh with yeah a ton of features oh, yeah. um so joe I mean, why, don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit about three nine i mean uh uh i <laughs> Prusa Research is about developing your stuff. We have over 70, 70 developers. So when, when you were talking about this, uh, what do you love about the company? Uh, do you remember the Steve Ballmer developers, developers, developers <laughs> video? <laughs> yeah. It just kind of <laughs> remind me of that. But there is just so many things in 3, uh, 3.9.0. It, it is, even though we are working on the uh, on the 32-bit platform on the mini, and for the Excel, which uh, as I as I teased on multiple, or I mean, I didn't have to tease it. It, it is just obvious that it will be our platform for uh, upcoming years for all the printers. But but uh, we still dropped such a huge upgrade for uh, for the eight bit, and I think we are known to uh, known to support the printers for a long time. And I mean, adding features. Uh, all the time, because I just think it is a nice thing to do, and I, I, everybody just loves three D printing and want to make it nice. But uh, so one of the biggest, well, from the from the point of uh, request from people, is the Linear Advance one point five. It took some time. But actually, what we did uh, and why we did it from the ground up is that the fact that we just cannot uh, switch uh, linear advance from the old version to the new version without doing backwards compatibility, because I, that is just not how we do things. I mean, making everyone uh, to reslice the G codes with new settings. I mean, if you run if you run production, I just I just think it, it would it would suck if you update the farm and you have something which you are printing repeatedly for months to to force you do that. So basically, it, the the firmware can take all G codes and new G codes and everything is getting uh, uh, getting uh, converted into the uh, linear advance one point five. I'm I'm looking forward to hear the to hear the feedback from people who are trying it out. I personally, uh, I think the code base is more modern, but it is it is not the coolest part of the uh, coolest part of the release. 
if you if you take a look on the on the brightness settings for example that is a nice thing yeah that's super i wonder nice. if it, i mean uh, l let's let's ask the chat who who knew that uh some of the later mark threes can uh in the future dim the display yeah so if you have your printer uh somewhere where you can you know see it at night you can dim, dim the screen so that's not shining blue to the entire room that's pretty nice. Yeah. yeah, but I, I think I think it doesn't make sense to go through all all, yeah. all the releases because we have like fifteen minutes left. So do we have any more questions from people? What? Well, one that I keep see coming through and and I I think it's kind of funny uh, and and I totally get it is there's a lot of requests for a twenty four seven live stream of the, <laughs> the farm. Uh, people just want to watch our print, printers go all the time and. Uh, maybe maybe we need to toss a wise cam up into the the farm and and oh oh yeah I mean we were thinking about it for a long time but it is definitely not a priority <laughs> and uh, I mean I I would we would have to think of a way how to make it you know not so intrusive because I mean um, everybody is part of a team and uh, and the, the the farmers which are basically our heroes in the company i don't want to uh, make them to be on a camera 24 7. but we can definitely uh get the part of the farm which is not so frequent uh to stream ask and we'll deliver uh someone asked so just for a few seconds i've put the farm feed for you on the stream you can enjoy the machines go. just going non-stop Oh, I, I cannot see it on the Zoom call. Yeah, Damn. yeah, I put it I, uh, full screen. <laughs> it's 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 like people uh, uh, loving the the fake fireplace logs that they put on their TV. Oh because, yeah, you know. Oh oh yeah, that is one <laughs> of the best of... things on Netflix. I mean, virtual <laughs> virtual edition. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe we just need to set up a camera in front of a section of the farm. It's not a twenty four hour live stream, but we like record like five or 10 hours of the, the farm running in one area and people can just put it on loop if they want. So I, I mean, I mean, we could do it on a little because uh, the farm <laughs> is having the same schedule every day, all day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, do we have any more more questions out there, Nicholas? I'm oh, looking I at it. We do. The, the, the chat just keeps going. There's no stopping. Yeah, it's, it's hard. Uh, it's hard to catch uh, questions. So we do apologize to everyone. But uh, with how fast oh it goes by, it's it's hard to see uh, where things things are. One cool question that I've seen is why are the printers orange, Joe? <laughs> I mean, it it looks nice. It looks nice. If you are one of the OGs, you know that we we did not have the black and orange from the beginning. You, I, I, I saw it in like two or three times in the groups, but the uh, original was uh, dark blue with with the same speckles we have in the Galaxy Black with black parts. And then uh, I think then then we started to do black on black, black uh, black frame. And so, some of our customers uh, made it in orange and we just dicked it. So we were thinking about it and then we just implemented it. But that is a long, long time ago. Oh, yeah, that is the if you if you take a look on Matt, uh, look at Matt, that is the blue. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I went with, I went with silver parts because I think they thought that they worked well. But uh, yeah, that's the blue frame. Matt, is is that one of the frames I I sh br brought you or shipped you to to US? Uh, that that this, is this is when you came is... for Open Hardware Summit and you came down to Rhode Island to to oh, tour yeah. and uh, yeah. I, I bought two frames from you then. And I kept one what and year, sold one year, to a buddy of mine. What year is that? I have one here oh, too. Yeah. Uh, there you oh go. my god! Oh. Oh, Nicholas, Nicholas, you didn't know what 3D printing is <laughs> at the time I was making the blue frames. That's yeah. probably <laughs> very true. Yeah, this is the 175, <laughs> oh, sorry, 3 millimeter oh. gear, gear. Oh, that, that is the OG and M5 threaded rods on the Z axis. Oh, yeah, and, they're so and, tiny. And, and if you look, PVC tubing connecting the motor to the, to the shaft. 
And if you look on the on the Z axis, uh, Z axis uh, end yeah. stop, yeah. that, and look at the Z axis. Uh, I see I, X I, and I, oh yeah, there's there's an end stop right here. Oh, Nicholas, there's an idea for a video. We should do we should do uh, like a review of one of the OG uh, machines we we did. <laughs> yeah, there's so many cool machines in here. Like, there's a wood one. <laughs> That's some like yeah. super earlier prototype. Um, I, I was I was doing wooden ones at the very early beginnings of my company. There's also the cooking machine, the Mark III transformed oh. into uh, April Fool's oh, machine. Oh, ma Master Chef. Master yeah, Chef. Yeah, is. I I still think our April Fool's video are, uh, videos are one of the best in the industry. <laughs> Yeah. So, so Joe, my my blue <laughs> machine dates back to either 2012 or 2013. Uh, I'd have to look up when exactly um, uh, Open Hardware Summit was in Boston, and I I could figure it out that way. But yeah, it's it's 2012, 2013. So it's it's a pretty old machine. Okay. That's probably not a good idea, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't let go. Yeah. Uh, okay, um, what else do we have? We have a lot of questions out there that are for uh, the, the uh oh, we've got a visitor there. Uh, we've got a, a lot of questions out there for the farm software. Um, are there any updates about the, the, the farm software? Uh, well, that is in a big, big, big development. And uh, it is much more complex than what we thought. Uh, and we are now taking a look at the at the companies. All right, that was a bad idea <laughs> to let to, to let uh, some of my friends uh, in. <laughs> Sorry about that, but uh, it 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 is a lot of effort because it is not just about you know starting and um, and finishing the prints. Uh, because you have to think about if, if you want to do the farm for a uh, school environment, you have to think about how uh, about the users, users, user roles, about the billing, because the schools have uh, because the schools have uh, basically their own billing systems and it needs to be compatible with all of them all around the globe. And same with the ERP systems, uh, same with the ERP systems. So, uh, on the in in the companies, and then I mean, if you, if you think about this seriously, uh, the, usually the companies they they have to sign NDAs. Uh, they have to sign NDAs if they are printing customer parts. So that we know uh, in the movie industry, because if they are working on parts for uh, for a new upcoming crazy hot uh, series, we cannot talk about. The printers are basically locked in a room with a bodyguard, and no one can see the files. So if you ever, all of these things need to be uh, embedded, embedded in the in in the planning, which takes a lot of time. But I think we should have some some uh, early beta during the summer holidays something more basic while we work on the super hard stuff. And we will have some more some more news about the farming. Uh, this year, we were supposed to share more on the Dubai Expo, but that is obviously not happening this year. There is a question from Bob Pirock of whether there will be an upgrade kit from Mark Frias. And I think that's a uh, clear yes to the, to the to the excel uh to the excel now probably no yeah but to to I mean, the next generation of whatever comes after mark free and the series yeah oh yeah i mean but that that is def definitely sketchy uh not not sketchy i mean obviously as we always did we try to provide upgrade paths so from that point of view, you everybody would be safe. But uh, there, there's no such thing as uh, like the mark for plan now, because as I said, the X. What what we did, what we make for Excel will uh, be 
used on the successor. But I I don't want to I don't want people to think that successor to Mark III is behind the corner because that is just not true. Okay, there's another that's from Dan Borio. And that is, what about an updated evolution of Prusa printers? And I like that question. Prusa printers is being updated basically all the time. Uh, as you may have seen with the example of the print on demand, that's like a silent update that's been pushed live. And there's full-time developers working on Prusa printers all the time. There's just a lot of things to do, so it's uh, slowly but steady, we are adding functions one after another. One, for example, that yeah. I think it's kind of unique is the free MF thumbnails, which are super nice. So, yeah, yeah. But I mean, we don't give uh, we, we update Prusa printers all the time, but we just don't give out like the updates. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because the, the the changes they just go from the test server to to live. It is not. It, it is not like when you're operating the firmware or, or the slicer. And some of them are so, not huge new features, right? They're just essential things yeah. that you expect from a site like Prusa printers. But there's just so many of them that it, it just takes time to, to go through the list. Right. But, oh, there yeah. are oh, but there are exciting things coming. And there's, you know, the things that people, you know, desperately want from Prusa printers are on their way. It's just you know, there's, oh, yeah. there's been a lot of things, you know, kind of a common theme of this this whole discussion has been, you know, COVID threw things for a loop. Yeah. And so yeah. some features got pushed up like groups and print on demand while other features are, are you know, still in the works oh, because yeah. they, oh, yeah. they took a little yeah. bit more of a back burner. I mean, I mean every, everyone has to realize, uh, and I think over the, over the streams we will be having, I mean, just the Prusa printers normally would be one whole company. Uh, it is just one of our projects. We are ju we, we just have so <laughs> we are so many companies in, in one. We are FDM manufacturer. We are SLA manufacturer. We are filament manufacturer. We are now as we start with Prusa and we are now starting to develop uh, develop presence. Uh, Martin Martin ran away before uh, before yeah. we could talk about that. Oh yeah, we missed Brad. Uh, but we also do our own distribution. We do the content. So basically, basically I mean, we, Mikulas and the whole content are doing such a great job that we now have almost 140,000 subscribers, which is bonkers. Yeah, I would never guess that we crazy. could do that. And I mean, we, oh, I don't, I, we, we could talk for ages. We have the, we have the makerspace. We do the we do the maker fair here here in Prague. Just so many things. So maybe maybe over the course of the streams we will we will talk more about the projects because what what I understand from the online community, not everyone understands uh, the amount of things we do um, because we are for a long time we are not just uh, basic uh, 3D printer manufacturer. Yeah. There's there's so many things going on, and it gives such an opportunity for us for these live streams to kind of dig deeper into some of these things. Um, yeah. So one of the things that Nicholas is, is showing right now is uh, our our current contest on Prusa printers. So we have regular contests running on Prusa printers, and this is a, a great opportunity to uh, you know potentially even win a, win one of our machines. Um, and our current contest is for uh, sculpts and sculpting. Um, so you're seeing lots of really great, organic, beautiful models uh, that are being developed and, and added for this, this contest. Um, so if you're looking for, for pretty things to print, look in that contest. But if you're a sculptor, uh, this is a really great chance to potentially uh, get your oh. hands on, on a machine. Oh. Uh, and they only oh, yeah. have a couple more weeks left, right? Yeah. Nicholas, I think oh. it ends on the 7th? Yeah, it ends on the 7th. and. If you've never heard about sculpting, we also have a video and article about that. So even if oh, you yeah. may not win the SL one, uh, you can like get started with it, and it's so much fun. I've learned sculpting when I was writing the article, and it was seriously just way I mean, the, easier than I, I thought. I, I I have to get big shout out to Nicholas because uh, what what is important uh, for me at least to take from the video 
because I am not good at organic modeling. I mean, something which I cannot draw or, or program in OpenSCAD. But I was surprised to see uses for the for the uh, sculpting, even with the mechanical objects. You can you oh, can yeah. design something mechanical, and you can you can uh, fix stuff or make something smoother. Take a look at the video. Yeah, I'm just gonna try to find the the part. Oh my! Oh God. yeah, that th that plumbus you are showing. <laughs> yeah. You, you you modeled you modeled it and gave it to me for as a birthday gift. Yeah. That was very <laughs> nice. It's the perfect model to start sculpting because you know it's just a blob of you know stuff, but at the same time you have to get the form right as it does in the series. So that was a lot of fun. And yeah. Yeah. I mean the application that I'm showing in the video is repairing uh, photogrammetry scans or any scans where yeah. really I'm just holding shift here and clicking with my mouse. It's it's oh, yeah. ridiculous how easy it, it is to repair the scans with sculpting tools. That's, I don't know how else I would do that. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's it's really a great resource and you know for for people to check out the video and see what all's possible, uh, you know, really is useful. And Miklas, you know, it, it's so great to have you on these calls uh, because, again, you're, you're normally you're normally making all of these videos and you get a little voiceover, but you know, people <laughs> don't get to see your face. Uh, so it's it's been really really great having you on here and and thank uh, you, you know, showing people the man behind the camera. Um, but with that, uh, our our hour is up. Um, we we have have called our time. So uh, I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, you know, thanks for all the questions, guys. Uh, if we didn't get to your question, I apologize. But this isn't the last time we're doing this, uh, especially with the turnout that you guys had here. Um, oh, yeah. You're definitely encouraging us that this is going to be a, a routine thing, and you know, come back week after week uh, or every other week once we figure out our schedule or you know whatever it ends up being. Um, but come back and you know check out more and. I hate to be that guy, but you know, make sure to subscribe and hit the the <laughs> notification bell so that you can uh, know that, oh, that, that Matt, things are coming back. Matt, um, you are the first one to say say this on this channel. We, <laughs> oh. Yeah, but but the lives, I know, I know, but the live streams we want people to make He's sure right. they 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 actually show up because it's I a mean, little bit different than. I, I, I mean, what is what is the next thing? I mean, do, doing clickbaity uh, titles and clickbaity. <laughs> Yeah, uh, absolutely. We're gonna, we're, gonna get, we're gonna get thumbnails of 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 Nicholas and bikinis here for the the next stream. So, um, <laughs> so hey, the uh, one clickbait yeah. title was made by Joe uh, on our YouTube channel. Come I on, mean, I mean, I, I I think we should stop now because this is getting out of hand. <laughs> Thanks Thank everyone you. for watching. Thank, so, yeah. Thank Thanks you everyone, everyone for coming. And have a nice we, day. We really appreciate Bye. it. Uh, yeah, see you guys. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, absolutely. I think that went well. Is it off? Uh, um, we can still be heard faintly. Right. Uh, it fades out over time as this is the ending yeah. stream, but we can just chill out right now. Right. All right. I'm. You're not being. I'm going seen to anymore. get some rest. Okay. Well, Take care. See you, Joe. This was a lot right, of fun. See you. Bye. Cool. That went well. That went really well. It was fun. Yeah, so now we just let's start working on the next next stream. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, this was the first time I had heard maybe it's every two weeks. I was planning on it being weekly, um, but you know, we can figure out the the schedule. But yeah, um, you know, I definitely want I definitely want to mix in. I think I think potentially having you know someone from firmware team to really dive into three nine.